There we go. All right. How y'all doing today, by the way? Good. You doing good? Good. Yeah. good. My name is Isaac Garcia. Uh, I'm a CSP uh, out of the West Houston office. This is my home, so go Warriors. Oh. Oh, there we go. <laughs> we'll try that one more time. Warriors. Oh. Oh. There we go. We got to have pride for our team. Okay. Uh, I've been in the business now for uh, seven years. Um, started back in 2010. Uh, just to give you a little bit on my background, um, I was an assistant manager for the first uh, two years. And then in 2012, I became a DM. I was a DM for about a year. Uh, closed down and then uh, went back to being a manager as well for my home office. And then in 2014, I decided to go full-time sales rep. Uh, and now, uh, currently, I'm at a little over $350,000 in career sales right now. Um, most of that has come from uh, service calls and from events. One of my favorite things about doing events is the ability to get more leads to uh, sharpen people's knives. That's honestly my favorite part of the business, sharpening knives, because it's the part where you can actually sit down and talk with people and build a relationship. Right now, when y'all do appointments, y'all are sitting down and you're doing a presentation, right? Uh, and you don't really get that time to build rapport, except for the beginning when you're like talking about your goals and things like that. Whereas at a service call, one of the things that I'm doing is while I'm sharpening their knives, I'm getting to know them. And it's a really powerful thing when you get to, uh, to sell somebody that you know versus somebody that is just, uh, that is just, uh, you're just somebody doing a presentation for. I don't wanna hit the climb, but how do you get like silent? Do I? Or not? <laughs> I, oh, did it work? I think it did. Is it still recording my voice? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's what I really love about uh, doing service calls because you can actually connect with people as well. It's phenomenal. I have some customers right now. I was just talking to a customer uh, two days ago and he developed this machine that uh, it's supposed to help you like do reps, um, like if you're benching. And you know how you always need a spotter when you do bench, right? or when you're benching, right? Well, if you don't have a spotter, this machine, it has the bar uh, above you, right? Let's act like I'm laying down. And then whenever you're ready to go, you hit a button with your feet, and then the bars come down, or like the thing that's holding it actually comes down for you. And then it stops about your, uh, your chest level, so if you ever drop it, it's gonna fall on the, uh, on the arm bars there, and, uh, and it's not gonna squash you, which is really nice. And then whenever you need help getting up, you hit another button, and it raises up the, uh, the bar again for you, which is really cool. And uh, I got to know them, we were talking about it, they made a prototype of it, gave them some ideas. Uh, and it was really, it's a fun experience getting to sharpen people's knives and getting to know people more. Uh, by a show of hands, who has sharpened knives before? We got two people, and then you yeah, did it yeah. once, right? Yeah. That's fine. Um, we all have to start somewhere. Right. Uh, so first thing I'm going to teach you guys is uh, whenever we're doing a service call, the biggest thing you want to know is uh, is the product and you want to know what you're doing. The more they see that you know what you're doing, the more they're going to trust you. If you don't look like you know what you're doing, are they going to trust you? Not at all. Right. And even if you don't act like you do because they don't know. Okay, my first few service calls, I did not know what I was doing at all. I was just like, uh, they told me to do this and this and I just did it and good thing They didn't really know what I was doing because it was pretty bad Worst case scenario guys if you do mess up on the knives We can always send them back to the factory and get them replaced at the factory. So don't be too nervous. Okay um, So this is how we're gonna do it first I want to teach you how to sharpen the knives and then I'm going to show you guys how to actually do the service call and how you would present the products and how you're going to uh, present upgrade options like the Cutco Kitchen or the Complete Upgrade and things like that as well. For those that haven't seen, uh, and this is for those who have seen the sharpening, so Taylor and Spencer, if you'll just bear with me so they can see how this goes. Uh, first thing, you also, everybody in here, this is the greatest investment you can ever make in your Cutco business, an Ed Reed Sharpener. It's like 35 bucks online, you go to Vector Connect, you order it, the sooner you can get it, the better, okay? Uh, this will save you in so many ways because not only can you service your past customers, but you can also service uh, pink sheets and things like that. And you also get people, especially when you do shows, you're gonna get more leads that way. And people who have cut coat usually know more people that have cut coat. So it's really easy. Birds of a feather flock together, right? Um, so this is the way you wanna do it. Ooh, do we have a, a knife that I can actually use? We, do you know if we have knives? Oh, yeah. Can you go get one for me really quick? Just get yeah, like I'm a petite carver or a, do you? Yeah. 
That would be awesome. Okay. I'm going to pass this around. Uh, I'm going to give you my white stone first. Forgive it. It is a little dirty. I do use it a lot. So you're going to notice on the, uh, you have your soft stone, which is going to be your white stone. Okay. Everybody want, uh, write down the white stone is the softer stone. And then this gray brown looking stone, this is the harder one. Okay. For now, we're just going to be focused on the white stone. And on each stone, there's, uh, it's a triangle. And so you have two sides with the ridges on it that actually go. Do you have your. Sorry, I don't have a straight edge. You do not. Uh, you only have a straight edge? I don't have a straight edge. No, I need a, uh, like a petite carver or trimmer or something uh, with the double uh, B edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, brother. So you're going to see that on the stones, you have two uh, ridges right here. And these are designed so that they fit in between the double D edge, okay? This side right here is going to be the flat side, and that's going to be the part where we're going to take off the burr. The way you want to set this up is you're going to have the block in front of you. You're going to put the flat side on the left side, and you're going to put the, um, the ridge side on the right side. Now, for safety, your Edward Sharpener will come with two safety rods as well. Super important to have these in here because the one thing that you don't want to have happen is you miss and you cut your hand, okay? These are there to protect your hand. Make sure they're always on there at all times, okay? Now, this is a really simple process. Don't be nervous. Uh, you know, I'm going to have each of, uh, each of y'all come up here and try this out as well. Don't worry if they mess it up. I'll sharpen it for you. I'm pretty good at it, okay? And all you want to do is you're going to hold this right here. Uh, you can either stand up or sit down, whatever you feel comfortable with. I feel more comfortable when I stand up. Um, and so what you're going to do is you're going to have it. You're going to start on the back of the blade. You're going to line it up with the teeth right here, okay? You're going to get it right there. And all you're going to do is you're just going to go down. And you're going to go... There's about four ridges in between each one. You just want to get it in between every single time, and you're going straight down. Don't go down like this. Don't go down like that. You want to kind of get it at a perpendicular angle, and then just you're just going straight down with it. This is designed so that when it's going, it's going to start sharpening the edges in between, and that's how you're going to want to do that. So you're going to go just like this. Then once you're doing that, you want to do it about twice, going up and down. And then you're going to come on this side, and you can either do it like this, or one of the ways that I like doing it is you can actually go in a circular motion just like that as well. Because what's happening is whenever the knife goes dull, the, uh, the edges on here are starting to fold over like that. So what we need to do is this side right here, this motion right here, this is actually going to start flattening it out. Okay? So again, you're just going to come up here. You're going to go right here. Just go straight down. And then you're going to come around, and then you're going to take that off. Super easy for the double D edges. Okay? Does anybody have any questions on how that works right there? Um, so I noticed you're getting yeah. it like relatively soft. Like yeah, you don't want to put a whole lot of pressure with okay. it. Okay? Uh, especially um, if some of your customers just oh wow, that's sharp. Uh, <laughs> if some of your customers just got uh, them about a year ago, you don't really want to put it through that much. Uh, uh, through that much force or anything, if you're gonna have to, if you feel like you have to go harder, that usually means you're gonna have to pull out the gray or brown stone. Okay. okay. Uh, with this one, you don't have to apply a lot of pressure on that. Okay. Okay. But good question. Okay. So uh, if they're newer, you use the soft one, and if they're older, you use the yeah. sharp. Yeah. The only time I use this is if they're like ten years old. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, or if it's just really, really dull, and I can see that the teeth are starting to wear down. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and by the way, what I just showed you guys, again, the more knowledge you have, the better you're going to be in front of your customers. So one of the things that I do, I'm very visual with my customers. Uh, when I show them about the double D edge, because what I'll always do is you want to expect the knives, which I'll go over here in a second. But uh, when you go like that, you want to show them that the, the blade's kind of folding over, and that's why you're going to want to go on this side. And that's just, it's just something mental for the customers that they're like, oh, this guy or this girl knows what she's talking about, okay? Versus just start doing it and not explaining anything as you go. So uh, I'll do this one more time, and I'm going to have Harrison, you're going to come up, and you're going to try the same thing. Uh, again, you're just going to have it right here, perpendicular, and you're just going straight down in between. And then you're going to come back around on this side. Okay? Let's try that out. And 
go. Do you feel the teeth getting in between the edges? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel that? Yeah. So that's that. And the thing on this one, by the way, guys, I, I should have mentioned this. You don't want to have it flat on it like that. You really just want to make sure that this part is okay. touching it. And so you're going like that. You notice how there's going to be a little bit of a gap in between. You can feel that, right? Yeah. It's all a feel. And when it feels good, it feels good. All right. <laughs> feel good? <laughs> all right. Can we have Barbara, right? Yeah. Yes. Is this kind of how you did it the first time? Yeah. Um, I had, I don't know if you know Austin Woodington. Yeah. Yeah. He's like cost on Brother basics. right there. Yeah. Love that guy. There you go. Eh. It's okay. Yeah, when you get towards that kind of uh, this part right mm -hmm. here, you kind of want to start picking it up ever so slightly so that it's still going at a perpendicular straight down. Does okay. That make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Feels pretty good like that, right? Try it one more time. Yeah. And by the way, I would strongly encourage you guys, before you actually go sharpen knives, you want to uh, take a few times uh, and practice on your own knives or on some of the office knives that we have here as well. That's good. You're doing cool. a really good job. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Feeling great. Maddie, is this going to be your first time doing it as well? Yes. Awesome. No so. pressure. Okay. <laughs> Barbara just did it great, I'm just saying. <laughs> and so again, you just want to have it perpendicular to it. There you go. Make sure they're going in between the teeth. There you go. My picture is sharpening now. This is not the contraption that, I, that, was, that was in my head. You had like a big wheel in your head, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's what I first yeah, picture too. Yeah, like the factory. Right, yeah. yeah. It is. <laughs> So just like that, just a little bit of a gap, not too much. There we go. Get all along the blade. Don't forget the, this part of the blade. Okay, go ahead and try it one more time on this side. And usually, guys, whenever you're sharpening the knives, you only need to do it about two to three times um, on the when you're sharpening them. Bye. Okay. Bye. You're leaving. I have to eat dinner. I didn't even get to the goods yet. My grandma made dinner for me. Make sure somebody take notes so they can tell you it's going to be good. That's on straight edges. Nope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who lets you in this office? I let myself in. <laughs> hey, can you give me a straight edge? Yeah. Thanks. Five. Oh, you got to eat healthy. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> gotta go to bed early. <laughs> yeah. 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 How does that feel? It's pretty good, right? Yeah. yeah, pretty simple. Thank you. You're welcome. I know I didn't hear that the wrong Yeah, time. it's okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to get on you later for that. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? All right. Come on, Zach. And forgive me, guys. I'm going to have to go kind of quick because uh, she did ask me to keep this within an hour. So. So you do order that sharpener like on Vector? Mm -hmm. Yep, Connect. Vector Connect. Okay. Uh, and you go to... Um, I think Kathy's ordering my tablet. Oh, okay. I see. Right. The sooner you can get your own, the better. Don't forget to... Did you already get yeah, this side as well? Great. Let's do it one more time. <coughs> Make sure uh, there's like a little bit of a gap, gap okay. like right in between. There you go. Okay. There you go. You feel that difference on yeah. it? When you angle it just ever so slightly, you're going to feel it actually getting in between. Because really what it is, it, there's three straight edges in the middle. And the way we're about to sharpen the straight edge, you're going to see that it's very similar. Um, that's the nice thing about when you have a quality knife, it's pretty easy to sharpen. And it's a very similar process. How does that feel, Zach? Pretty good. Pretty good? Nice. Yeah. Let's see. Yep, feeling good. Nobody's dulling it out so far. That's cool. a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Cesar, why don't you come up here, brother? 
Let's try this out. Same concept. I was the pro. How does that feel? Good. Pretty simple? Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Spencer. There we go. And oh, by the way, uh, one of the things you may feel on some of your customers' knives, have you ever washed your sponge before and it gets caught on the tip? I hate that. It's like my worst enemy. Okay. What you want to do when that does happen, get to the tip, get to about the middle point of the flat edge, okay? And you're just going to go up and down, just like that, okay? That little motion right there, some you might have to do it longer, some it might not take that long. I mean, I've seen some that they're literally like bent and it takes me a while to actually get it off. Most of the times, if you just do it up or down a few, uh, a few times, it's gonna get take uh, get rid of that and your customers will love you so much. They'll be like, oh my God, that's been bothering me for so long. Because I mean, that ruins sponges, you know? So that's a little quick little tip that y'all can uh, do whenever that happens. I do wanna show you, I hope my steak knife is a little dull. See, okay, so what I want you to do, anytime you grab a knife and you're gonna expect it, you're gonna grab it with your right hand, and with your left hand, you're gonna brush up on the back. Now, right here, you're gonna feel a little bit of a burr, I want you to feel that, and a little bit right here, and then some parts not as noticeable, okay? See if you can feel that, and then pass it around. Let's see, I think you might be able to feel on my cheese knife, too. Keep them pretty sharp. Just a um, little bit. Do you kind of feel that right there? It, it's it's so slight. I mean, mine are still pretty sharp, but it's a little bit. On some of them, it's gonna feel like it's literally pulling your skin. Okay, you've ever felt that? Yeah. Uh, and show that to your customers. Okay, let them know that uh, what's happening to the knife and things like that. This one, you can kind of feel it a little bit more on this end, not so so much, but like right at the end of it Here? yeah right there do you feel that yeah so that right there is that's what you want to show your customers on how that's feeling okay feel that Maddie a little bit of a burr it's mostly towards the end of it, the tip end of it yeah, right, right, right. right there mm-hmm I'll take that one back from you let Zach feel that you kind of feel that right there yeah. you feel it mm -hmm. So that's what's going to be happening. You know, that metal, it's going to just start floating over. I mean, when it's starting to rub against stuff, man, it's going to eventually start doing that. Okay? It's just a natural curve of the knife. Can you feel that as well? You got it? Okay. Now, any questions on the double D edge? If you ever need to, if you don't feel like it's getting sharp enough, and the way you want to test for sharpening, uh, you'll have in your, um, when you're doing appointments, you'll have some leather with you, have the cutting board, Test it, make sure it cuts through it in one swipe. If it's not cutting it, then what you're going to want to do is pull out the gray stones or the brown stones uh, and then try it on there. Worst case scenario, if it doesn't work after the gray stones, that means you got to send them back. Okay? But again, you always want to start off with the white stones first and then if need be, go to the gray stones. Okay? Now, when it gets to the straight edges, both sides are going to be flat now. Pretty sharp knife. We can get it a little bit sharper. Okay, so on the double D edge, both sides are going to be flat, right? No. Yeah. No. Ah, I got you there a little bit, right? No, it's only on the straight edges. Okay, both of these are going to be flat. And the way you want to do this, same concept again. This is the beautiful thing about sharpening. It's all very similar. You just got to get the motions down. Right here, what you're going to do is you're going to have it perpendicular again towards uh, perpendicular with the wood, and you're going to notice that you're going to see quite a bit of a gap. Can you notice how there's a, a gap in right. between the stone and the and the knife? Can you see that? So it's not going to be like this. It's going to be perpendicular to the to the block. Okay. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to go down, 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 down. Okay. Notice how I'm not going straight down like that. I'm going when I'm uh, when I have it. I'm going down and, um, I mean, don't have it too close to you guys. You're going to have it right here, and you're just going to go like that. 
Is it important that you switch back and forth each time? Yeah, because if I only do it this side, I'm only sharpening that side. So you want to sharpen both sides. So good question, though. Um, and then what you're going to want to do, another great investment, best investment anybody can ever make besides the Ed Reed sharpener, is going to be the number 82 sharpener. Single best sharpener cut codes come out with for straight edges, okay? And so what you're gonna wanna do with this knife, I'm not gonna do it too much because uh, if everyone's gonna do it, it's gonna wear down the knife faster. If you sharpen a knife too much, you can actually hurt a knife, okay? So uh, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna start in the back of the blade, have it perpendicular, tilt it down just a little bit, about 40, uh, not so much 45, but just above 45 degrees, apply pressure, and then pull straight back. Okay, now when you're doing it, you're gonna have it right here, and then you're just gonna go like that, okay? And you're not applying a lot of pressure. If you apply too much pressure, you're gonna dull out the knife. You just wanna apply pressure, okay? Not too, too much. So again, you're gonna have it right here, tilt it down, and then just go with the curve of the knife, okay? It's a, it's a feel thing. And then once you're done with that, one more time, you're gonna come right here, twice on each side, feel the knife, going to be sharp as ever okay and this one you only got to do it about one to two times as well you're actually going to notice that when you do it you're going to see little metal shavings fall off that's natural that's the sharpener working it's taking off the metal okay this sharpens at a 15 and a half degree angle where most knives can only sharpen up to 22 degrees so make sure you don't put any other knives in here unless it's cut though okay uh, if they ask you to sharpen any of their straight edges just say sorry you can't uh, you're not allowed to run it through this because it can actually damage the knives, okay? So, again, I'll show you one more time, and then I'm going to have uh, each of you come up here and try it as well, okay? So you're going to have it right here, perpendicular, just like that. And then you're going to come here, apply pressure, pull through, pull through. Also, one of the things that you want to do, notice how these has little lips right here. You want to make sure you're... Uh, tapping it out because what's going to happen is the metal is going to build up in the middle. If you don't remove it, you're going to damage your knives as you continue to sharpen because metal is just starting to build up in there like little metal gunk, okay? And so you want to make sure you're tapping it out in between each sharpen, okay? Uh, and so, uh, Harrison, can you come up here please, my friend? Same concept. Nope. We're going to try it on this first. Oh, no. Yep. So you always want to make sure you're holding on to the block. And let me show you why, though. Okay. Because okay. if you're not and you go down, gotcha. notice how this can come up, and that's not going to learn. Uh, that's not going to be any good. Okay. There you, you go. Is it about this gap? Yeah. Like you notice so, when it's perpendicular okay. uh, to the table, just like that, you notice that there's still yep. a good enough gap. Okay. There you go. Now do the other side too. You always want to transition back and forth. There you go. There you go. Yep. And now, again, you're going to put it right here. Put it towards the back. Right there. And then not too much pressure. Okay? And just go straight back. There you go. One more time. There you go. And then uh, tap that out. There you go. And then go ahead and run it through that one more time. Now with straight edges, we're always going to use the white. We're never going to use the gray or the brown. It's like a grayish brown. What color is that to you guys? I think it's gray. It's like lead. Gray. I think it's gray. People say it's brown. So how'd that feel? Oh, good. Feel yeah. good? Yeah. Let's see. Yep, you didn't do it. Good job. <laughs> All right. Pretty simple process. Okay, Barbara, come up here as well. <coughs> Same thing. There you go. That looks like it feels good. Yeah. Nice. Now let's go ahead and run it through that. There you go. And yeah, you exactly what you're doing, you want to come straight back. You don't want to go at an angle because then you're going to damage your knife. So just okay. like you're doing, you're doing great, just come straight back. That should be good. Turn it around, tap it out. 
All right. And then go ahead and run to that one more time. Feel free to move it closer to you so you feel better. Yes, you said two times, right? Mm -hmm. About two to three times. I mean, to, okay. to where it feels comfortable. And then what you're going to do is you want to look at it. And one of the things you want to look at when you're looking at a knife, if you ever see a reflection coming back to you, that means that part's still a little dull right there. Also, you could just tell by kind of a touch. Never do this to a knife. It's just kind of just grazing it just a little bit. What do you mean by reflection like? So you're going to notice sometimes, see if you can see it on the double G edge. You see it on one of mine. I feel like I have a dull knife in here. Hold on. That's the problem with being a CSP. All your knives are sharp. Oh, okay. You can hardly see it right oh, there. You okay. see that? Yeah. So, and actually, Harrison, come up here too so I can show that to you. Yeah, I see that. <clears throat> See how there's a little bit of a reflection right there? So that means I would actually have to sharpen it. Okay, cool. Does that make sense? Cool. There you go. Come on up here, Batty. All right, and I'm going to show you what I just showed them as well. Notice how there's a little bit of a reflection right there. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so some of them, it's going to look like a mirror looking back at you. Okay, it's pretty bad. And so. Uh, go ahead, same concept. <laughs> just about right. Yeah, just like that. And then you're just going to apply pressure to it and just go down. And it might be better, try starting from like a little bit closer to the top so that when you're coming down, you have a little bit more, you see how you, you notice how you have more room to play with now? Right. There you go. Go ahead and run through that. There you go. Thank you. Notice how, let me see something. Let's see if I can gather any of the pieces. No. Okay. There you go. Now let's look at it. Do we see any spots on there? No? Looks good? Looks good to me. <laughs> there we go. All right, Zach, come on up here, brother. Same concept. Make sure we want to start back here. Yeah, so that way, because if not, you're only sharpening the top half. That second one was better. I don't know if you noticed the first time when you did it, you uh -huh. only stopped about right there. Okay. So that's why you want to go with the motion of the okay. knife. Okay. okay, let's try that one more time. Right. There you go. Tap it out. And you're going to notice it more so when you're tapping it out when you're dealing with really dull knives because you're going to see a lot of gunk build up. In fact, I'll see if I can't take off a little few metal shavings on this one to show you how it's going to be. There we go. How'd that feel? Pretty good. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Can you see it up there a little bit? It's a uh, little yeah. bit of a reflection, uh -huh. right? And so that tells me that I need to sharpen it a little bit, okay? So, Spencer, you want to try this as well, brother? Sure. Same thing. And you can feel whenever you do it at the wrong angle when you're pulling it through. If it doesn't go straight back, you're going to kind of feel how it's grinding on one side more than the other. It's all a feel thing, and that's one of the things you want to be very conscious of whenever you're dealing with the knives. How does that feel? Sure. Pretty good? Yep. All right. Oh, yeah, we have little, so I want y'all to see, that's why you want to make sure we're tapping it, you see those little metal shapings on there? So when that starts to happen, see that? When, you, when that starts building up in there, it's going to start dulling out the knife as you're doing it. So you want to make sure you give it a good tap, a good healthy tap to make sure they're coming out. Let's see 
here. All right. So that nice, good to go. All right, so these two knives are going to be good, and I, I so I did get to show y'all some of the metal shavings so that y'all can actually see that they come on uh, onto the board. All right, does anybody have any questions on the sharpening? Okay, before we leave here again today, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna ask y'all to sharpen these two knives again. I'm gonna give you guys a grade. I'm not afraid to fail anybody. All right, uh, but it's not hard to uh, it's not hard to pass if y'all do exactly what y'all just did. It's going to be pretty uh, pretty simple. One of the biggest things that we want to do as we start with our service called training program is we want to make sure that everyone going out there um, can actually sharpen the knives and they're not going to mess up anybody else's knives as well. We want to make sure we're building a good reputation with our customers all in the KD area and all in the Houston area as well. Okay, uh, so again, just keep in mind, they're going to sharpen for me one more time when we're done, uh, and then we'll be good to go from there. Okay, pretty simple. In this pack right here, guys, it's super easy to put up. I mean, there's two sleeves or three sleeves in there in total. You put the gray stones on one side, you put the white stones on the other, and then these two little guys, they can go on either one. Put them in just like that. It's your Edward Sharpener. This guy has easily, well, let's see if I'm at, this has made me uh, probably about seventy to $80,000 uh, because of this guy. Uh, with all the service calls and everything. So, again, $35 investment. I've made about 70 to 80 grand with it. I'm very, very happy with it. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. Now, let's talk about the actual service. Okay. I'm going to kind of walk you through uh, as if um, I was walking into the customer's house. What am I doing? What am I saying? Uh, I'm going to show you a document that I use as well whenever we start talking about the upgrade. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, you know what, before I do that, I should explain the document now, so that way I'm not having to explain it in the middle of it. Uh, this document, I'm going to email uh, to Kathy so that we can print them out, and, uh, and that way everyone can have the uh, soft copy of it, and hopefully we can get some hard copies as well. Um, let's see. Oh. All right. Isn't that a sexy document? It's called the Cutco Inventory Wish List. Can you guys see that on there? They kind of can. All right. So, what you're going to want to do, uh, well, here it has a spot for the customers to fill out their name, their cell phone number, their email address, uh, and their home address as well. Then what you're going to want to, uh, and then it has the basic set right here, which is the homemaker set. As CSPs, we no longer call it the homemaker, the, uh, the signature set, or the okay. ultimate set. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I just I stopped calling them that. We call them the basic, the family, and the complete set. Sounds a little bit better with it whenever you're dealing with your customers as well versus homemaker signature and uh, ultimate. Ultimate just kind of sometimes seems a little bit too big for people, but when you say complete, People feel good about that. Oh, complete. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. So again, basic set right here, family set, and then the complete set. It has also a little section down here for business gifts, which I'll talk about in a little bit. This will open up the opportunity for anybody who owns a business. Uh, you can actually, they can get their logos engraved on it. Uh, here are the additional knives that we have as well. So the Santoku knives, the French Chef, the Petite Slicer, the uh, Cheese Knife, and the Gourmet Pairing. Also has a section for the flatware the cookware, kitchen tools, gadgets, and then we have the kitchen accessories, the sporting knives, the garden tools, and then the family program, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit as well. Okay, What you're going to want to do, the first thing is whenever you walk into somebody's home, one, I mean this is pretty basic, uh, I'm sure everybody already does this, but if you don't know the customer already, if you do, do what you got to do. But for people that you don't know, you'll, you know, you always want to make sure you walk in. First of all, you're looking professional. Every time I go to a service call, I'm always wearing nice jeans, dress shoes, and a polo shirt. I'm never going in there in a t-shirt, shorts, or anything like that. 
you got to be professional because the way now you're no longer, I mean, you're still the college student. You're still going in there. You're still earning a scholarship and things like that. But now you want to make it seem as if you're, uh, you're actually able to take care of them as well versus them taking care of you. Because when you take care of them first, they're going to take care of you after. Does that make sense? Okay, so you're going there, dress professional. When you walk in, you ask to take off your shoes as well. Uh, and then they're gonna usually just take you right over to the knives. Now, the first thing I do is I go straight for business and I start looking at the knives, okay? I'll start grabbing them, I examine all of the knives. And you wanna explain to them what you're gonna do. So Mrs. Jones, what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna examine all of your knives, okay? Make sure everything's good. And then, go, uh, and then I'm, as I'm examining these, Mrs. Jones, I'm also going to explain what each knife does for you as I'm sharpening them. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to show you some of the new stuff that Cutco came out with uh, and some of the upgrade options you can take advantage of as well. It's pretty sexy. I'm pretty excited to show you. Uh, but first, let's see. Okay, this knife looks pretty good. Oh, this one. Oh, I can tell you use this one a lot. And they usually say, oh, yeah. You can feel the ones that they use the most. Okay, so you're examining the knives. Oh, this one feels like you use it a lot. Oh, this one doesn't look like you use it too much, huh? Yeah, it's usually like the bread knife or something like that. Usually the bread knife doesn't get used as much, okay? Trimmer, usually the number one knife being used, and then the petite chef right after that as well. Make sure you're examining the knives. Go ahead and take a look at the handles as well. Make sure there's no chips. Make sure you examine the, uh, the full tang as well. Make sure there's no chips in there. Because as they see you doing this, they know you know what you're doing, okay? Uh, so you're examining the knives, and then make sure you're lining them up, okay? I'm, uh, I'd love to keep my space organized. I always have my knives lined up. I usually put all my double D edges on one side, and I put my straight edges on the other side. Okay, uh, we're going to act like all of these are double D edges. I have them right there. And you always want to start with the double D edges first. That's usually the harder one to do. So you want to start with the harder one first and then go to the easier one at the end. Okay, so uh, double D edges first, then the straight edges. Okay, as you start sharpening the knives, which we already went over on how to sharpen the knives, you want your customer to fill this form out right here. The, um, the, the form that I just showed you. Have them fill this out. Have them fill out uh, the pieces that they have. So if they have one paring knife, put a one next to the paring knife. If they have a petite carver, put a one next to the petite carver. If they have the table knives, let's just say they have six, they don't have eight, put six next to it, okay? Uh, and then make sure you have them do this. The reason we want them to do this is because it's just human nature. As they fill it out, they're gonna look at the rest of the stuff, okay? And they're going to say, oh, I have the Petite Carver. Oh, I have the hard, I don't have a Petite Santoku. Hmm, I wonder what knife that is. And that's just something that they're going to do in their head, okay? As they're looking at this, as they're checking off the ones that they have, they're going to see a salmon knife, and they're going to say, what's a salmon knife? They might not ask you up front, or if they do, just be like, oh, that's a really cool knife I'm about to show you in a second, okay? Uh, and so you're having them fill this out. Um, and as you're sharpening the knives, you want to start dropping hints and things like that. Well, uh, as you're having a conversation, one of the things that I always like to do, I always ask about the family. I ask about what they do for work. I ask about their dreams and their aspirations because no matter how old anybody is, everybody has dreams and aspirations. It's a real cool thing. When you talk about your goals and you talk about their goals, it's going to help you a lot more um, uh, in building rapport with them. Excuse me. All right, so you're sharpening the knives, and then you say, oh, so um, make sure you have all their cut co out. So you don't have any of the flatware or the cookware, and, they, uh, and they're going to tell you no. Oh, yeah, our cookware is awesome. It's waterless and oilless cookware. Uh, you can boil eggs without water, steam vegetables without water. I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. That's all I say, OK? Can anybody guess why I would say it right there as I'm sharpening the knives? The way it's not like a surprise, like you show it to them and they've already been thinking about it. Mm -hmm. One of the things I love to do, hypothetically, is garden. Okay? I'm planting seeds. All right? And that's the best thing to do. Uh, and you can say things, oh, and then yeah, our flatware, American made flatware, beautiful. 
Uh, it comes in an upgrade option. I'll show you in a little bit. It's pretty cool. I can't wait to show it to you. And they're going to ask you, oh, can I see it now? Can I see it now? No, hold on. I'm, I'm about to show you. And then just quickly change the subject and keep talking about whatever it is you're talking about. Don't be afraid if you're not talking about the right thing, guys. Again, this part is really just about building rapport and, uh, and building yourself as well. So you build the rapport, you build yourself. How do you build yourself? You show them by knowing what you're doing with the knives. Another thing is, is that whenever you set up on their table, please make sure you have a medium size cutting board or a small size cutting board under it. You never want to actually sharpen on somebody's uh, table out of respect, especially if they have like a nice granite table, if they have wood table or glass table, make sure you're always uh, on the cutting board because if you slip and actually uh, accidentally hit the cutting board, at least you hit the cutting board and not their table. Okay, so every time I'm doing that, I'm setting up right here, and then whenever I need to use this, I take this off, and I'll pull this through as well. I'm always working on the cutting board, okay? That's a, a, a key thing that you guys want to know, and it's also going to sh uh, show that you respect their home. If you have a placemat, I, I have some placemats in my, uh, in my kit here. I usually like to put, this isn't required. The, table, uh, the cutting board definitely, but I like to put this under so it's kind of like my little workstation. Okay, this is always nice to have as well. Uh, again, you're sharpening your knives here. All right, now, once you start getting to like your last two knives, okay, as soon as you're done sharpening all the knives, and usually the ones that take the longest are like the table knives, because they have like eight of them, or six to eight of them, so make sure you're spending, taking your time on those. But once you get down to about your last two knives, usually they're your straight edges, you want to uh, hand them the book, okay? And you're going to put it in front of them and say, Mrs. Jones, I'm, uh, I'm coming down to my last two knives, and so now I'm about to start showing you the upgrade, okay? And you're going to have the book in front of you, and you're going to open it, and you're going to show this side right here. You're going to see the Cutco Kitchen, and you're going to say, Mrs. Jones, right here, this is our Cutco Kitchen. I'm actually going to show you how to upgrade to that uh, here in a second. You, um, and then you're going to flip the page, and you're going to go to the guarantee section. You're going to say, Mr. Jones, this is, uh, I know you've already seen the presentation, so I'm not going to do the whole thing again. All I'm going to talk about right now is what we just took advantage of. It's our free in-home sharpening. Uh, it's part of the forever guarantee. The nice thing about it is, is whenever you need them sharpened, you can call me. Or uh, if they get too dull, we can always send them back to the factory as well. That's part of the forever guarantee that a lot of people love to take advantage of. Fun little cool thing as well, the Forever Guarantee does go with our cookware and our flatware and our gadgets as well. Um, and so again, planting the seed right there, okay? Now, Mrs. Jones, what I want to show you is we're going to show you how our upgrade options work. Now, usually with your last two knives, you're just kind of just leaving them there now. You don't want to sharpen all of them all up front because when you close the deal, it's always nice to finish on the sharpening uh, if you'd like to. Okay, and so I usually leave like the last knife or two off to the side so that way I'm not completely done. And I'll show you why that's important in a second. You're going to open up to the trifold section, and you're going to say, Mr. Jones, this. Oh, uh, one of the things that I'll do is when I open up to the trifold section, you want to explain to them the knives that they already have. Okay. And so if they have the paring knife, so Mr. Jones, you already have the paring knife, the trimmer, the uh, spatula spreader, and the petite carver, assuming they have like a studio set, okay? So you explain the four that they have. What's really nice is one of the things that we like to show you with Cutco is because what's something that a lot of people don't know is you can actually take advantage of our trade-in option slash our buyback option. What we do is we buy back the block that you currently have right now. So this studio block that you have, just the wood by itself, and you're gonna to point to the wood block that they have, and you say just that piece of wood by itself costs about $120. What we do is we take that $120, we apply it towards your discount, and you can actually upgrade to our complete set, which a lot of people really like to take advantage of. Because really what you have, Mrs. Jones, is just one of our starter sets. It's something that a lot of people like to just kinda of start off with. It's kind of the way that people, I always like to tell people is it's kinda of like dating Cutco at first, okay? Okay. Your starter set, you're dating us. Now that you've used it for X amount of years, it's safe to assume that you love them, right? Yeah, I do. Awesome. By the way, you take great care of your knives. Uh, I just want to, do you hand wash them or dishwash them? Oh, I hand wash them. Great. I mean, you put them in the dishwasher if you want, but um, 
I, I just want to say you take really good care of your knives. Compliment them, okay? They feel good when you do that. All right, and so the way the upgrade works, like I said, we buy back your block, and in the upgrade, this is gonna be to our complete set, and what's nice is that when you're done with this, when you get this set right here, you're done with Cutco. You never have to worry about buying another knife, unless you want to, you wanna buy some more gifts later on, uh, but what's nice is that it's gonna come with your turning fork. The turning fork is great. You can turn things in the fry pan, get things out of the pickle jar, get things out of the cherry jar. Also comes with your butcher knife, and this one, I don't know if you've had the issue yet, like right now the four knives that you have, you don't really have anything to go through like a hard brine or anything like a watermelon or a cantaloupe. So this butcher knife, this is great. What you do is you grab the knife, and if you want to, you can actually pull it out for them. Me, I don't like to pull out the knives because then it gets too messy. I'm just explaining to them and I'm using hand motions. If you feel more comfortable pulling out the knives, you are more than welcome to, okay? Uh, but then you pull out and you, you explain the butcher knife. It goes right through the rinds. It's great for, and it's also good for separating chickens. The next knife it's going to come with is your chef knife. Now in your studio set, Mrs. Jones, you don't have a good chef knife yet or anything like that. And so this is going to be for your chopping your cilantro, your carrots, your onions, and things like that. It's going to make life a lot easier. Also in the upgrade comes with a bread knife. Currently right now in your studio set, you don't have a bread knife. Now let's be honest, you might not cut bread every single day, but the few times that you do, it's always really nice to have a good sharp bread knife with you as well. So the upgrade will also come with that. It's gonna come with your carving set. Don't use that every single day either, but whenever you do a barbecue or Thanksgiving or a family occasion or anything like that, it's gonna come great there. Kind of consider it like the spare tire of the set. The next one's actually one of my personal favorites, the Hardy Slicer. This is the heavy duty knife. And again, in your studio set, you don't really have a heavy duty knife. Uh, this one's gonna be going for going through uh, butternut squash, acorn squash, spaghetti squash, frozen meats, frozen hamburger patties. It's also good for going through, uh, through like the bones and things like that. And uh, so that's gonna be like the bad boy in the set. And everybody needs a bad boy in the kitchen, Mr. Jones. That's gonna be your bad boy right there. So that comes in the upgrade. The next two knives that come in the upgrade are the chopping knives. It's always important to have a few more chopping knives than just your chef knife, especially whenever you have multiple people cooking in the kitchen, because I'm assuming if you ever have like a family occasion, you usually have like one or two people cooking. It'd be horrible for one person to have one good knife and the other person not have a good knife. And what's really nice about the Santoku knife as well is that it does have a tip to it. So you can actually put the knife on the cutting board and just pull right through as well, which makes julianning really easy. Notice how I combine the two chopping knives, okay? You kind of want to condense the set. You don't want to explain every single knife. The next one's going to be, the next two are going to be your specialty knives. That's your cleaver. Everybody knows what a cleaver does. You're not going to need it every day, but it sure is going to come in handy whenever you need to tenderize your meat or if you need to go through anything hard. That's kind of like the protector of your set. The other specialty knife is that salmon knife. What's really cool about this is you can actually, it's really, really flexible as well. And you can use it and get the, um, whenever you have your watermelons, you can actually fold the knife and get the rind out as well, which makes it really easy, Mr. Jones. Uh, then you also have your petite slicer, which is really nice. We call that the family bread knife or the family cake knife as well, because you don't really need this long slicer for, your, uh, for the cakes or anything. This one's just gonna be the fam family friendly one. This is something that usually the, uh, um, the little ones can use if you allow them to, obviously. Uh, but it does make it a lot easier for them. The next one's gonna be the raw meat knife or the boning knife. The boning knife is great because out of all the knives in here, none of our knives are good for uh, raw meat except for our boning knife right there. That's gonna be for your chickens, your fajitas. We're in Texas, guys. Say fajitas all the time, okay? Every, you eat fajitas, right? You eat fajitas, you eat fajitas, you eat fajitas. Last night. Last night, you see? Everybody can relate to fajitas down here in South, okay? So make sure you just tell them, that's your fajita knife, okay? Boom, it always resonates with us. Yeah, I think Fajita, hey, yeah, fajita. <laughs> you got to, if you can, do it. <laughs> and then the last two knives, uh, Mr. Jones, are gonna be the, uh, the traditional cheese knife. Now, believe it or not, this is actually our number one seller. Okay, uh, and the reason is is because it's not. I mean, it's good for cheese, but the best thing it's good for are potatoes, cucumbers, zucchini, yellow squash. The reason that I point out those specific things is because every single one of those things you cut, they always stick to the blade. Every time you cut them, they're always sticking to the blade. With the holes, it creates an air gap, so it's gliding right through and nothing sticking to the blade. I promise you, it's like cutting 
warm butter whenever you're going through that knife, or when you're going through a potato with that knife. It works amazing. Now, usually this is the one knife that I do pull out and I show it to them and I have a potato with me and I have them cut it right there and then. The reason I do that, I don't want to show them all of them because that gets overwhelming, but if I show them one and it's towards the end, they're excited now. Does that make sense? Because it's kind of like a roller coaster when we're going through this. You know, right now they're just getting a whole bunch of information and then they get to this spot and they're like, oh, this is a really good knife. Now they're excited about the knife and the upgrade as well. And then you explain the last knife, the four inch paring knife. This one also is a customer recommended piece because you know that paring knife you have? It's a great knife, right? But you ever notice that it's a little too short to use on the cutting board? Yeah, and they usually agree with you as well. This one, we came out with a little bit longer, so that way you can use it on the cutting board, and it makes life a heck of a lot easier when you're doing it that way as well. Okay, so again, you're just connecting the two pieces right there uh, with the four-inch paring knife and the small paring knife. Uh, and then, Mr. Jones, right now in your set, we have... Do you need the charger? Yeah, is it good? It's at 53. I think we should be good. Okay. I, I, if I could have it, that'd be yes, great. Yes, ma'am. I'm at 18. I think you need it. I definitely do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Where was I? On the table. I just got done explaining the four-inch paring knife, right? Mm -hmm. So we have the, the four-inch paring knife right there. And then the last thing, Mrs. Jones, is going to be your, uh, your table knives. Right now you have four. Let's be honest. Have you ever had a family occasion here? You have more than four people here, right? What's really nice about the complete set is that it comes with 12 table knives, so that way whenever you do have family over or friends over, everybody can get a table knife just versus you know having to pick and choose who gets it. And then it also has a slot for your shears. Now, if they don't have the shears, you want to go through the shears again. Most of the times they have the shears based on our first appointment that we did with them. Okay. Uh, if they don't, you want to go through the shears to cut the planning again. Let them know that it also comes in the set. Um, and so any questions on that part right there? Pretty simple. Again, all I'm doing is I'm just explaining the set. I'm explaining what comes in the upgrade. Some of them might tell you, oh, I'm not looking to upgrade. Oh, that's fine, Mr. Jones. This is just something they had asked me to show you for future reference as well because right now, especially uh, if it's a special kind of weekend or when the playoffs are coming with SE1 or SE2, let them know. Well, we just like to show it to you because right now is where you can save the most money on it. And it's crazy, ridiculous deals I'll show you in a minute. Um, and so don't let them discourage you if they say, oh, well, we're not looking to upgrade right now. But if you explain to them, I'm just showing you how the upgrade progress, uh, um, process works, it's going to fit with them a little bit better. Okay. The next thing that comes in your upgrade, Mr. Jones, is it's our, this is the cool part, is our flatware. Do y'all have full flatware pieces yet? I would highly recommend if you don't have them, make sure you get them. If not, you can explain it just the way I'm about to explain it as well. Mrs. Jones, now everybody already has flatware, uh, but what they probably don't have is quality American-made flatware. And especially now in today's day and age, anything we can do to support America, the better. This comes with the 12 five-piece place setting, so it's a total of 60 pieces. comes in a beautiful chest just like this as well. What's really nice about this set is that the table knives actually work. Whereas most flatware uh, um, sets, Mrs. Jones, when they come, the table knife is really just kind of there for decoration or it's there to spread butter. What's nice about these is that they're actually going to cut their steak or their chicken or if they need to spread butter with it as well, they can. It also comes with two forks, two spoons. What's really nice is if you ever drop one in the garbage disposal, we're not going to replace the garbage disposal, but we will replace the spoon or fork that falls in. Okay, um, and if you ever lose one, Mr. Jones, you ever like lose one fork before? Yeah. You know, whenever you lose one, you can't just go buy one, right? Yeah, you got to buy a whole place setting. Yeah, you got to buy a whole entire place setting in. And some place setting, Mr. Jones, if you want a quality one, they can start off at a buck fifty to two fifty easily, and that's just because you lost one dinner fork or one uh, a soup spoon or something like that. If you ever lose one of ours, Mr. Jones. You can just buy just that one, and it's going to save you a heck of a lot more money doing it that way versus having to buy an entire play setting again. And this also has that forever guarantee that I talked to you about as well. And the weight on it, not too light, not too heavy as well. We worked a long time. We call it our forever design because uh, we got it to that right balance where guys aren't, or like women aren't feeling like it's too heavy and the guys don't feel like it's too light. Also very strong as well. If you have the flatware with you, 
it's always great. I always show it to them. This one I do pull out so they can see it. And I just explain to them, yeah, it's very strong. It's not going to bend on you. Now, if you apply it like a lot, a lot of pressure, it will. But very, very, very strong. 1810 chromium steel. Pass that around so people can look at it. 1810 chromium steel. And again, it has the forever guarantee. This is also going to complement your, uh, your, um, your complete upgrade because whenever you have uh, our complete set of knives, having the, um, the flatware along with it as well, Always a beautiful combination, and it stands out in front of your guests as well. Then the next thing you're going to want to do uh, is you're going to flip over to the uh, upgrade or to the cookware, and you're going to explain. Now, Mrs. Jones, the next part of your upgrade is going to be our cookware. Now, our cookware is honestly Cutco's best hidden secret. Okay, the reason we want to say that, guys, is because one, they probably did not know we made cookware. Okay, most of the times they don't. You make cookware? Yeah, that's why it's our best hidden secret. Okay, this is Jones. Our cookware is our best hidden secret. As I said earlier, it um, as I said earlier, it boils an egg without water, steams your vegetables without water, and it uh, cooks your meats without any oils. The way that works, it's a five ply construction. It has uh, three plies of aluminum core in the middle. It's also has a magnetic steel in the middle as well, and it's coated with the stainless steel as well. So a total of five plies with the magnetic steel. It does, if you have an induction stove, it does work on that as well. What's really nice is the way it's layered, whatever the temperature is at the bottom, it's gonna be the same temperature at the top and on the sides as well. So it's cooking it evenly. To be honest, Mrs. Jones, there's really no health benefit of boiling an egg without water. It's just a cool little trick we can do. But the real new uh, benefit comes in with the vegetables. Have you ever steamed vegetables before in water? You ever notice that when you steam the vegetables in water and you pour out the water, it's that orangey green color? That's actually all the nutrients that you're supposed to be taking into your body uh, when you're pouring it out into the sink. Usually the sink's the healthiest person in the kitchen, but not us. If you think about it, Mrs. Jones, it's kind of like coffee. You're familiar with coffee? You know, you have the, the coffee grains at the top. You get your hot water. You drain it through the grain, or you drain, uh, drain it through the coffee beans. Out comes the coffee. You drink the coffee. You throw away the beans, right? Well, you're actually doing the exact opposite with your vegetables. The good stuff that you're supposed to be drinking, you're throwing that away, and the bad stuff that you threw away in the first place, now you're drinking that or you're eating that. Okay, uh, a lot of people don't know this, Mrs. Jones, but whenever you boil or you steam your vegetables in high heat, you actually burn away a lot of your nutrients as well. Nutrients can only survive up to a certain uh, temperature. Once it passes that threshold, your nutrients die. So essentially, you're eating vegetables or dead vegetables. So what's really nice about our cookware is that you actually cook on a medium to low temperature. You never cook on high, and that's the best part about it. You preheat it on medium, let it sit there for about two minutes. Then you turn it down to low, and that's where you're going to cook. Chop up your vegetables, put them in there, close the lid, come back in about four minutes, and you're going to see little vapors coming out of the side. That's how you know it's about done. And what's really nice is you did not add any water. It's just only cooking in its own natural water, because vegetables has water in it, especially if you put like a lot of greens in there, like lettuce, romaine lettuce, or, something, or spinach and things like that in there. Uh, it's going to cook in its own water, and it's going to taste so much better for you, Mrs. Jones and it's gonna be much healthier for you and for your family. Make sure you're always tying in the family with them as well, guys, because that's something that's gonna strike home with them. And uh, Mrs. Jones, you know, we know everybody already has cookware, but the reason why people wanna use us is because one, nonstick pots and pans have a chemical in it called PFOA. Are you familiar with that? No, that's fine. It's, it's actually, it's the, it's the agent that actually makes your cookware nonstick. And because of that, it's, uh, with that chemical in it, it's actually a carcinogen. It causes cancer. And you, you, you know that old saying, never leave the, the, the stove on with the, with the pot on it because then you're releasing fumes into the air or some people will wake up the next morning and their canary birds are dead if they're in the kitchen or something like that. If you've ever heard of those kind of stories, it's because of the PFOA in the nonstick pots and pans. They've actually banned it. Uh, and so they're, they're not supposed to be manufactured anymore, but they are still being sold. So you want to be very careful with that in the United States. And um, uh, because of that, with the, with the PFOA in it, it's just going to be really bad for your family. And in fact, in my family, I've gotten everybody away from it. Everyone's starting to use our cookware 
for that reason right there. Now, if you have the, uh, the, the cast iron ones, those are great. They taste great. But you actually never wash it, so this, uh, there's a lot of sanitary uh, issues when it comes to the cast iron pots and pans as well. Aluminum pans, they actually, I don't know if you know this, but aluminum is one of the leading causes of Alzheimer's disease. And so every time you're cooking in your aluminum cookware, that's actually, um, you, you get closer and closer to uh, Alzheimer's. So you want to be really careful with that. And so although everybody already has cookware, a lot of people will find that when they know that their cookware is not the best for them and it's not benefiting their body, they really like to look at our cookware. Because the last really cool part about us is when you make your chickens or your steaks or your burgers in here. What's really nice is that when you're cooking your, uh, like for example, what I do is I have my chicken breast. And uh, after I season them, I use my skillet, turn it on to medium, turn it down to low. That's where I'm cooking. I get, uh, I get my chicken breast, I put it in the skillet, I close the lid, I didn't put any water, any oil, nothing in there, I just put it in there, close the lid. Depending on the thickness of the, the chicken breast, if it's really thick, I'm going to leave it there for about 17 minutes. I leave it there for 17 minutes, when, it's, uh, when I come back, I take off the lid, you're actually going to notice a pool of like juice all around your chicken. Uh, and what's really nice is that you didn't put anything in there, but it's cooking in its own natural juice, uh, which tastes so much better that way. Chicken breasts are predominantly dry. I agree with you. But with this, it's actually come out very juicy, tastes very good, and you don't have to flip it or anything because it's cooking all the way through. Hands down, the best cookware in the world. Uh, the upgrade actually comes with our complete set, and I'm going to show you that a little bit more. Uh, here in a minute. So again, Mr. Jones, the upgrade comes with the, the complete set. It's going to be with all the knives that I've already explained with you earlier. It also comes with the uh, with the flatware and it comes with our cookware. Now here's the fun part, Mrs. Jones. Now we get to the part where we talk about like uh, gifts and accessories for everybody else in the family and for everybody um, and for um, and for yourself as well, because what's really nice is that when you upgrade, we actually give you a lot of freebies with it as well. We give you some of our gadgets, and what's really nice about our gadgets is that the ice cream scoop melts ice cream on contact. You might already have one, but I promise you, it does not work as good as this. And if they say they have the Pamper Chef one, sometimes they'll tell you that. Oh, okay, yeah, Pamper Chef, great company. I love their products. One bad thing about them is that their ice cream scoop actually has antifreeze in the handle. If you shake that handle, you're actually going to hear the liquid inside. Uh, that's antifreeze, and that's not good for you. If you ever put it, that's why they tell you never put it in the dishwasher because it's gonna uh, it's gonna leak in there and it could potentially get into your system, which is really really bad. Uh, fun little fact, Mr. Jones, the CEO of Pamper Chef actually has our complete set of Cutco. Two of them. So, yeah, huh? two of them. Yeah, two of them. I never say that though, but yeah, good point. And then, <laughs> uh, and so y'all can also use that as well if anybody's like Pepper Chef. Well, he has our product. Like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> also comes with a veggie peeler as well. Uh, comes apart so you can clean it. Pizza cutter comes apart so you can clean it. Comes with an extra soft grip cheese knife as well, so that one you can actually use for your cheese and your other cheese knife is actually going to be for your utility knife. Comes with a can opener and a wine opener. Miss Jones, I know you already have all this. Or, or you might be missing one or two of them uh, in your own personal brand. But what's really nice is that when it comes for free with the upgrade and they know it has the forever guarantee, they usually throw away their other ones and they keep these because these are going to be with them for the rest of your life. Okay? Because that's one of the things that sometimes will come up when they're like, oh, we already have those. I know you already have it, but these are going to last you for the rest of your life, whereas those you're eventually going to have to give away or, or throw away, and these you're going to get for free in the upgrade as well. The next thing, Mrs. Jones, uh, along with your free gadgets, is you actually get to pick two of our outdoor items. You can either get the fishing knife for Father's Day coming up or one of our outdoor camping knives or our hunting knives. We have our gut hook. We have our sporting knives, pocket knives, garden tools, and barbecue tools. Who do you know in your family that actually uh, likes to go camping or barbecue or um, does any like outdoor activities? Let them tell you. Make sure you, if you if they tell you multiple people, Take some notes down, okay? Make sure you're writing them down. Ask them which ones they could use. Ask them to pick out their two free ones first, and then ask them to pick out the other ones that they would like to get as well if they want to add anything else on, okay? Or if they want to know the price. And if they ask you, well, how much is the price of that? Just write it down, okay? You never want to give up the prices right away or anything like that. Uh, you just want to show them 
or you just want to write it down and you're going to explain it to them all at the end. If they do ask me, I'm like, oh, okay, don't worry. I'll write that down at the very end. I'm going to give you all the prices because if I tell you right now, Mrs. Jones, this is this, this is that, this is this, it's very easy to forget. But if I write it all down at the end, I'll show you. It's a lot easier that way. Okay. Then the last little thing, Mr. Jones, uh, do you have any, like, um, in the next year, do you have any uh, weddings, anniversaries, special occasions coming up or anything like that? Let them answer you. And if they say yes, don't ask them what gift they would like to have. Just ask them, do they have any special occasions coming up? Oh, yeah, my, my niece is getting married in September. Oh, great. You know, the reason why Cutco is, is one of the best gifts to gift uh, is because when they first get it, there's usually two reactions. It's either the first one where it's just like they know Cutco and they're very excited about having Cutco, but usually the typical reaction is going to say, oh, wow, knives, thanks. <laughs> but the really cool thing, Mr. Jones, how long have you had your knives? Ten years? That's awesome. You've been using them every single day, right? The nice thing about Cutco is that although at first they might not be extremely excited to get it, but in five years, when they're still using it, and it's still the best knives they have, 10 years, and they're still using it, and it's still the best knives they have, 20 years, and then they're gonna realize that this was the best gift that they got at their wedding, because whenever it did get dull, or if the tips do break, they can send it back to the factory, and we're gonna replace it for free. As an added bonus, Mrs. Jones, one of the things that we do is we engrave their name on there with the day, uh, I'm towards the end, like maybe another Six. 10 minutes. Six. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I wanted them done at 5.30, but I know we started a little bit late. But yeah. Ten point. more minutes. Um, and so it does come with the, uh, you can engrave it with their first and last name on there and along with the day they got married. So it's a gift that truly keeps giving, whereas in today's day and age, we give a gift. And literally the next year, they're either upgrading or they threw it away or they already spent it or it's gone. You know, uh, and so with Cutco, this stays in their kitchen. They use it every day. Whenever it does go dull, we're going to replace it for them. And if we do have to replace it for them, we're going to re-engrave the knife for them as well. So based on those, I know you probably weren't thinking about getting them Cutco for their uh, as a wedding gift, but which one do you think would be the best one for them if you were to do that? And then let them pick it out. We have some different options right here. Once you have that entire list, guys, you're going to have it on the back of that form. Okay, that form that they were filling out in front, you're going to want to make sure you're writing all the notes on the back. Then you're going to get to the part where it's the best. Okay, it's uh, you're going to break the, the sheet into three pieces or into three sections. Let's see if I can do this for you guys really quick. Can one of you guys like give me a scrap sheet of paper, please? You got it. Thank you. So we're going to act like this is the sheet. I'm taking all my notes towards the bottom. Or if you do it on top, you could also do it at the bottom. I'm going to break this sheet into three sections. Okay. We're going to do the Cutco Kitchen Upgrade. And then the Cutco Essentials Upgrade. And then the Cutco knife set upgrade. Okay. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to uh, and say, Mr. Jones, now this is the fun part. I'm about to show you how much money you can save if you do decide to uh, upgrade to uh, our Cutco kitchen upgrade. And right here, you want to make sure you have it open to this page right here so that they can see the cookware, the flatware, the gadgets, and uh, the complete set with the kitchen tools and all that right there. Then what you're going to do is you're going to work out the math. Okay, and you, this is, oh, what I always do right here, this is the part where you want to ask them for uh, recommendations, okay? Like, as you're working this part out, really quick, put, pick your head up and say, Mrs. Jones, we're almost done here. Um, I'm about to show you all the prices and everything, but really quick, there's one more really important part. This is where you can really help me out the most, and then that's when you go into your rec approach. Okay, uh, and then give them the paper so that way they can start filling it out. Make sure they got their cell phone out and they start filling out the recommendations. And then you're going to fill out all the prices. And you're going to write down the original price. Uh, I'm just going to put numbers there. And then you're going to put the discounted price. Discount. 
Okay, so as they're doing this, this usually takes about five to 10 minutes for me, guys. So don't worry if it's taking you a long time. Add up everything individually, have your price sheet out, make sure you're doing the complete set of cookware, you're doing the flatware, and then you're adding up all the individual pieces for it as well, okay? And then uh, as they're doing that, as they're writing it, hey, Mr. Jones, just out of curiosity, which one excited you more? Was it the cookware or the flatware that excited you more? Oh, the cookware? Okay, so that's gonna be the Cutco Essentials upgrade because that's the one that meant more to them right away, okay? So now this one's gonna be the knives, um, and the cookware prices. Okay, and then you do show them the full price and then show them the discount price. What I like to do whenever I get the, uh, the discount price or the way you wanna do that is you get the original price and then you're gonna multiply it by 0.825. Or I'm sorry, by 0.8 and that's gonna give you 20% off, okay? If you wanna do 25% off, you're more than welcome but I found 20% off is a pretty good spot for me, okay? You can also go up to 30, but that's gonna hurt your CPO a little bit, uh, but 20 to 25 is usually a good range. Don't worry, don't figure out what you have to give away for free right there and then. That's gonna take way too long. The best thing to do is just get all the numbers and then later on figure out what we have to give away for free. If you ever need any help with that, you can reach out to me. Or Spencer, do you know how to do that as well? Uh, reach out to Spencer or one of the managers. They can help you figure out how to get to that price as well. So you don't have to actually figure out what you're giving for free right away or anything. Just get the total, multiply it by uh, 0.8 or by 0.75 if you want to do 25% uh, off. And what I'm going to do there too, as I show them the discount, I'm going to uh, I'm going to put on there uh, saving an additional um, the 120 for the blog. Just let them know that that's included in the discount as well. Okay, uh, and then you're going to do the same thing for the Cutco Essentials upgrade. You're going to show them the uh, the full price and then the discounted price. And then the last one is as if they were only upgrading to the. Um, uh, to the complete set. Now, what I do is on the Cutco Kitchen upgrade, I usually do about 25%. The Essentials uh, upgrade, I do 20%. On the Knife Set upgrade, up to you. I like to make sure they save a minimum of the $120 for the blog, but usually I do about 10 to 15% on that. I'm not doing the entire um, 20 to 25%. The reason you want to do that is because they'll see, they'll, they'll kind of see it in their own mind that the Cutco Kitchen upgrade is the best bang for their buck. Okay. Now, once you get to this part, what you're going to want to do is you're going to fold up the paper. Okay. You're going to kind of fold it in threes so that all they can see is the Cutco Kitchen. Okay. So, Mrs. Jones, and then you're going to kind of pretty much go into the clothes of like your homemaker. You're going to let them know. Um, so, Mrs. Jones, for the Cutco Kitchen upgrade, like I said, what it's going to come with, you're going to explain to them what it comes with. It's going to come with all the new knives that I already explained, plus that cheese knife, which I know you really like. Uh, and it's going to come with the 12 table knives. It's going to come with the flatware set. It's going to come with our cookware set, all the freebies at the bottom, along with the two, uh, uh, along with these pieces as well. And all you're going to be paying today, the original price is this. But if you get it today with the, our SC1 going on, or playoffs, or our Super Bowl, or uh, Memorial Day special, we're going to get it down to this right here, and it only comes out to about $800 a month. Now, I know this is it's kind of like a trip to Costco. If you've ever been to Costco, usually you'll spend anywhere from $500 to $1,500 at Costco, but what's really nice is that you only do this four more times, and you never have to upgrade your kitchen again. Wouldn't that be nice to never have to worry about that again? Your cut co your kitchen journey is over because now you have all the cookware, all the flatware, and all the knives you'll ever need. And the next time you see me, I'm just going to sharpen your knives and you're just going to give me something to drink, which is going to be really nice. Um, and so um, let me ask you, Mr. Jones, would this be something that you'd be comfortable with doing? 9.9 .9 times out of 10, they're going to say no. <laughs> That's okay, all right? And when they do say okay, hey, no worries. Thank you so much for letting me show you that. I just wanted to show you. I, uh, I didn't think you would, but I just wanted to make sure you knew your options because that's where you can save the most money. But like you did say, I know you said that the cookware was kind of the thing that you were leaning towards most, right? So what's really nice about this is that this is only $600 right now. Again, uh, it's going to be that um, kind of like going to the Costco thing again, but you're only going to have to do this four more times. And now you're going to have all the cookware you're going to need, which is going to be really nice because you're going to get to throw away all the other cookware that's not good for you and it's not benefiting your family. This is actually going to benefit you and you're also going to get the complete set of knives. Would that be a little bit more comfortable for you? Let them explain. 
this one, I mean, you got like a 20% chance that they might say yes, okay? Usually two out of 10 will say yes. The ones that they uh, most of the times will say yes on is now we're going to the Cutco kitchen upgrade or just a knife set upgrade. You show them that one, and now all of a sudden the price is only like $300 for five months. Imagine starting off at 800 and they're like, holy crap, that's a lot. Now you get down to 300 and they're like, oh, that's not that bad. So you're going to close a lot more. Uh, if, you, if your goal is to upgrade them to a complete set, you want to start off with the biggest possible order. Okay? Uh, and if, because if you start off and you show them only the knife set upgrade first, and that's like 300 usually your average order is going to come down to like 250 or something like that. Okay? So make sure you're always starting off with the Cutco Kitchen, then the Essentials, and then the knife set. And if they say no to that, say, that's totally fine. And then that's where you're going to actually work with them and say, well, what is it that you're really looking for? What pieces can we do for you? Okay. And then that's also when you want to, uh, if you need to, you can call your manager and just work out a deal like that. Last thing I do want to mention to you guys uh, with, the, with the family program, I, I'm sorry I didn't get to explain that as much, uh, but the family program, I call that also the legacy program. If anybody ever wants to add on... Um, um, if they ever want to get sets for their kids, let them know that the sets already have built-in discounts, but when we do a part of the legacy program, they're going to save more money that way as well. Okay? Does anybody have any questions? I'm sorry, I know we went way over time, uh, but does anybody have any questions on top of that? Um, well, sometimes when yeah. I, I do the, the kitchen yeah. upgrade, when I start like, really, really high, yeah. and I get to the complete set, they're, they kind of like freak out at the beginning. And then yeah, so one of the things that, that's a great question, uh, is that you always want to make sure you're prepping them as you're going through it. Like uh, some of the questions you can ask at the beginning, hey Mr. Jones, when you first got the knives, were you a little nervous about spending that much money on your knives? Yeah, I was a little bit. Do you feel a lot better now knowing with the services that you've gotten and the, uh, and the quality that the knives are? Do you feel a lot better now? Yeah. Would you do it again? Yeah. Uh, okay, great. And then as you're going through it, uh, I always like to make the joke like, hey, look, we know Cutco's expensive. And I'm always joking with them. I'm always letting them know, hey, do you want to take a guess at how much this is going to be? My goal is to get them to guess the biggest possible number. Um, oh, and I'm also going to give you all a price comparison sheet as well. Um, and, uh, and that price comparison sheet, it shows like a, a full set of cookware from another company, a full set of flatware. And when you add those numbers up, it comes to like a little over 10 grand or something like that. So I want them thinking that. And when they do, you just let them know, don't worry, it's just part of my job I'm supposed to show you. Uh, and so and if they, if they do get closed-minded by it, um, that usually tells me one of two things. I didn't build it up properly, and I didn't just explain to them that this is just, it's just the process. It, I'm not trying to sell you to, I'm not trying to sell it to you. I'm just showing it to you so that you know about it, you know? Because if they get closed-minded, that means it's because they think that I was specifically trying to sell them that. I just want them to know all of their options. You know, it kind of opens them up a little bit more. Does that so make you sense? say that like, kind of towards the beginning or once you start explaining? Yeah, I'm just saying, I'm just showing you the upgrade. Doesn't mean you have to get it, but it's just so that in the future, for your future reference, you're going to know that we have all this. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Okay. So, but great question. That does happen a lot, especially in the beginning. Okay. Any other questions? Will I be able to find this recording? Uh, I hope so. I think so. Yeah, it's just going to go on YouTube. Uh, any other questions? Everybody pretty good? Who's excited to sharpen some knives? All right. I want to, uh, uh, I, I believe y'all are going to have to go ahead and start doing some phone time. Um, I'm going to want uh, y'all to come up one more time and just sharpen, though. I'll, I'll just call y'all individually real quick um, so that we can just, I could just watch y'all one more time, make sure we got the, um, the goods down, and uh, we'll go from there.